Hey y'all, today is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be what? Glad in it. Comment down below if you finish that scripture with me. So my name is Shantavia Johnson, but you can call me Shay, and I am your host of Obedience Podcast. If you're new here, here at Obedience Podcast, our mission is just to simply obey. Obey is an acronym that stands for O, being obedient to God, B, believing in God's word, E, evolving through Christ Jesus, and why yields into Holy Spirit. So if you think that you'll be interested in our content, be sure to hit that subscribe button down below. If you're watching on YouTube and if you're watching on Spotify or listening on any of our podcasts and platforms, please be sure to hit that follow button. It does help us go a long way in the podcast community. But for all of our returning subscribers and listeners, welcome back and let's go ahead and jump into this episode. Welcome to Season 4, Episode 13 of Obedience Podcast. It is such an honor to have you guys here because you could have been anywhere in the world, but you're here with me. So I appreciate that. Now, before we even jump into this episode, I have to invite my co-host, Holy Spirit, into the room. So let's take a moment and bow our heads in prayer. Father God, I want to thank you for the opportunity to have this ministry and minister to your people. I thank you for giving me the strength to push forward in order to be able to get on this platform by myself as a solo podcast host. I thank you for the encouragement, the strength, the guidance, and I pray that you continue to guide me through this journey. I pray that through this first episode as a solo host, that I gain the confidence that I need in order to continue to do the work that you told me to do. I pray that in this episode, people learn how to be still and know that you are God. I pray that through this episode, people are released from any burdens or strongholds that they may have. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Oh, and I ask for more of you and less of me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Always got to pray for that, y'all, because I don't want any of myself during this filming. All right, y'all. So for all of the new listeners of the podcast, if you haven't heard the news, this is my first episode as a solo host here at Obedience Podcast. So I have decided to make some changes to the format of the episodes, and I've decided to add a brand new segment. The hopes of this segment is to make the podcast like a virtual small group, you know, where we have a fellowship moment and then we dive into the word. I really want to build a community with my listeners where you can pray for me. I can pray for you. You can hear my good news. I can hear your good news. You can hear something crazy that happened to me and I can hear something crazy that happened to you. I really want us to feel like a community here at Obedience Podcast. I truly want to connect with each and every single one of you. So I have created the segment that we are going to call Hilo. So first, I want to give a shout out to my girls over at Tents and Tabernacles podcast because they were a huge inspiration for this. Y'all, please go follow them over there. They are reading through the Bible. And as they are reading through the Bible, they recap each chapter with their own like biggest takeaways and things like that. And if you are a Bible geek like me, you will absolutely love the podcast. So definitely go and follow them. But they have a segment on their podcast called Highs and Tries. And I just love that every single week listening to them. I literally feel like they are my friends. I'm finding out what's going on with in their everyday life. And it just really means a lot to me. And I really feel like they're friends in my head. So I kind of wanted that environment over here as well. With this segment, I'll be sharing with you guys a how the heck to me during the week something exciting a blessing that happened you know big up God you know and then with the low I'm just going to share a low that happened to me that week in an area that I really need prayer in and then I want you guys to be able to submit your hollow moments with me via DM and the comment section down below if you're watching on YouTube and also the podcast email address is available as well for you to send your hollow moments so please submit those y'all this week I won't have one since I'm announcing it for the first time but I am going to film next week so hopefully you guys 
will submit some hellos and I want to share them on the show so we can shout out God, right? But if you do have any that you want to keep private, just let me know. I have no problem just, you know, keeping that to myself, praying for you in private and not broadcasting it out to everybody on the show. But if you want to big up God and show him, show all the good works that he has done, definitely submit those. I'll have the information on the screen where you can submit those. But I'm going to go ahead and share a high and low from this week. I won't make it so long since I did have to spend a lot of time explaining what Halo is. But my high for this week is, of course, I am recording the first podcast episode by myself, y'all. This was a really big deal. This took a lot of work to get here. A lot of growth in Christ, a lot of guidance from him. So I really want to shout him out and thank him for being with me through this journey and for keeping me up. Yes, for keeping me. I did release a vlog this past Saturday just with the behind the scenes of the process of getting this episode together. So definitely go and check that out if you want to get a more in-depth look at the stresses that I went through. But yes, that's my high for this week. Y'all let me know how y'all like my brand new setup. I am loving my new setup and it is all glory to God. He sent me sowers into my ministry unexpectedly. He sent me deals that I never expected so this is all him and just none of me so big up to God glory to God there's not like a huge issue going on that I need prayer in but I think what I want you guys to pray in agreement with me for this week is just that the podcast reaches 800 subscribers we are so close to 800 but we need a couple more subscribers so let's just be in prayer that the podcast reaches the goal of 800 and then we surpass that because we serve a god of abundance right so that's what you guys can be in prayer with me on but do not forget that i want you guys to submit your highs and lows for the week so we can shout god out and also pray in agreement the word says when two are one in agreement something 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 i don't know the scripture like that off the top of my head but y'all know what i mean Hold on, I'm going to check it. I don't want y'all to come from me. Okay, it's Matthew 18 and 20. It says, for where two or three gather in my name, there I am with you. All right, so let's go ahead and transition into my favorite part of the episode, which I think I'm going to start calling Geek Out because I'm a Bible geek and I like to geek out on the Bible. I don't know. Y'all let me know down below how y'all like that. But let's go ahead and transition into the word for this week. So like I mentioned, this is the first episode that I'm doing alone as a solo host. And y'all, internally, I am freaking out, but I am so thankful that I am here. For everyone who tuned into the special announcement that was released this past Tuesday, how you felt then is exactly how I felt at the time Ashley told me. When Ashley told me her time was up at the podcast, I felt like time sped up not slow down. Yeah, I felt like time sped up. I went from having a good groove on things and balancing my studying for the show, my editing for the show, and releasing the show. So I had a great balance at this point. So the last thing I expected was a bump in the road, which was actually leaving. I no longer had a good groove on things because everything that was Ashley's responsibility previously was now going to fall into my lap because I did not have a team, y'all. It's just little me. And I literally felt like telling man, truth is I'm tired. Options a few, right? So I go in detail about the journey of everything, like I mentioned in the YouTube video that came out this past Saturday. So definitely tune into that if you haven't. I'll be sure to put a card on YouTube and a link in the show notes for everyone listening on the podcast and platforms. But so many things needed to be done in the process of transitioning to the podcast by myself. I needed new pictures. I needed a new intro. I needed a new show format. I was debating whether or not I should get a new host. And if I did get a new host, should it be someone in town? Should it be someone virtually? I needed to do a social media posting schedule because I wasn't in charge of social media. I needed a balance to not make myself go crazy and want to end the podcast. And all of these things consistently ran through my head on a daily basis. Until one day God pierced my heart and he told me, sis, just be still. And immediately I was like, okay, Lord, I give this all over to you. I give it all over to you. Now, I'm sure many of you can relate to this feeling that I was having 
whether it's feeling so overwhelmed by what needs to be done or figuring out what you're going to do next, we tend to never really stop and give God the opportunity to step in and orchestrate things in a way like no one else could orchestrate things, right? So I remember during one of my therapy sessions when I was working through social anxiety, my therapist would ask me a question and I would answer and then she wouldn't say a thing after I answered. And I was just like, what is wrong with this lady? Like, why is she not responding to my answer? Did I answer incorrectly? Like, I am so confused. It was complete silence. So I would just start back talking because I'm just like, I got to get rid of the silence. I got to get rid of the silence. And I promise y'all, every single time I answered the question and she wouldn't say anything, I was literally dry heaving inside. And after what felt like an hour, but was really a probably like 10 minutes of this tactic, she revealed to me what it is that she was doing. It was a technique that she used on a lot of people who were uncomfortable in social settings to let us know that you don't have to be anxious about what to say next or what's next to come in that conversation because it's okay to be in silence. She spoke on how so many people were so uncomfortable or afraid of the silence that we feel that overwhelming need to step in and say something or do something to break the stillness in the conversation. Now, I feel like this example was so great for this episode because many of us are afraid to give God the stillness that he needs in our lives. The second that we are faced with the trial, we jump into making a to-do list, figuring out how we can fix it, figuring out who we can call to help us fix it. We do all of this instead of stopping and being still and allowing God to step in and handle that situation for us, right? So I want to focus on Psalm 46 and 10, where it says, Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. Now, I'm sure many of you have heard this famous scripture time and time again. But the question I want to ask is, have you lived this scripture? I'm going to let that sink in. Slip some coffee. I feel like a lot of us are afraid to truly be still in situations because being still is truly trusting God in that situation. We feel as if we can handle the situation on our own and not being in control truly terrifies some of us. And also, to mention, God may take too long. He's a God not of our time. And sometimes what he feels like is a minute is like 500 for us. And some of us just can't handle it, okay? We just can't handle it. But we really need to lean into the reality that being in control is actually the terrifying situation and not the opposite. Because we can't handle things like our Abba can. While going through the process of revamping the podcast, I was stressed out daily, y'all. On a daily basis, I was stressed out. And my life was a mess. Whereas now, I'm being still and I'm letting God drive, it's easy selling. He sends me ideas. He sends me random seeds sowed into the ministry, random encouragement from people I never would have thought of to let me know I can do this. When I was in control, I couldn't think of anything. I had no ideas for what the background should be, what the topic should be, what the design update should be, how it's going to pay Ashley's portion of the podcast bills, consistently feeling like I cannot do this. I cannot do this podcast alone. But when I passed everything over to him and showed him that I truly trusted him in this situation, in this ministry that I know that he gave me, let me tell y'all, things quickly started to turn around for me. So during the next few weeks, I want to talk about different types of stillness that we as Christians should apply to our everyday lives. And of course, as always, I am going to back my claims up with biblical truth. So one of the first stories in the Bible I thought about when I sat down to study Be Still was the Israelites in the Golden Calf. Yes. Now, I know y'all probably like, girl, that is not the moral of the story that I remember from Sunday school, but this is going to be proof of why you should read the Bible for yourself because God will give you a different revelation of the same story that you've read time and time again, but he'll relate that story to you in a way to help you get through the different seasons in your life. So for all of my listeners and viewers with your Bible, please turn to Exodus chapter 32. So to give y'all a little background, 
This story takes place three months after the Israelites were freed from Egypt and they are camped in the wilderness of Mount Sinai. And they're actually located right by Mount Sinai at this time. And Mount Sinai is where God comes down and speaks to Moses on top of the mountain. Now, at this time, Moses was the only one who could come near to God and communicate with him. So one day, God told Moses to come to the top of the mountain because he needed to give him some specific instructions for the Israelites to follow. Now, like I mentioned, Moses was the only one who could go to the top of the mountain. So the remainder of the people were just camped out at the bottom of the mountain and they watched Moses go up the mountain and then they saw this smoke cover the mountain and they saw Moses disappear. Now I want y'all to keep that in mind. They saw it with their own eyes. They saw him disappear. Now Moses was on top of the mountain from Exodus 19 through 31. So all of those chapters, God is giving specific instructions to Moses this entire time. Where we are now in Exodus 32, we are told what the people are doing while Moses is at the top of the mountain. So reading Exodus 32 and 1, it says, When the people saw that Moses delayed in coming down from the mountain, they gathered around Aaron and said to him, Come, make gods for us who will go before us, because this Moses, the man who brought us from the land of Egypt, we don't know what has happened to him. Yeah, y'all read that right. So these people were asking Aaron, who was Moses' brother, to make God's little G's for them because Moses was taken too long. They said, we don't know what happened to him. Now, mind you, they saw Moses go up that mountain and they saw the smoke come over Moses and they saw him disappear. So they know where he's at. They know he's at the top of the mountain. So I don't know what they meant by we don't know what happened to him. It was silence. They weren't hearing from God because Moses was that person who went to God and communicated back to them what God said. So they weren't hearing what God was saying. So they decided to step in themselves and just, we're going to make gods of our own so we can talk to them and hear from them since we can't hear from the actual God, right? Now, I don't want y'all to start judging these people because Moses was not on top of this mountain for 40 minutes. He was actually on top of this mountain for 40 days, 40 whole days. Now, be honest, be honest with me, right? How many times have you prayed about something and you didn't wait at least a day to hear from God before you moved on that situation you prayed for and handled it on your own? To be transparent, I'm guilty. I have prayed to God about something and I didn't hear from him as quick as I wanted to hear from him. And I just moved on my own. I moved in haste. I'm guilty. I'm sure you're guilty. We're not going to condemn each other on this podcast. The Israelites did what many of us have done before, which is when we can't hear or we aren't seeing God move in the area in our lives, we just decide to move in haste in that area because he's taken too long. Instead of just sitting in that spot, or sitting still and waiting on God. God just wants you to sit still while he does the work on top of the mountain. He was working with Moses on top of that mountain. He wasn't just sitting there watching the people struggle or be confused. He was up on top of that mountain giving Moses specific instructions on a place that he could dwell among the Israelites. He was giving Moses instructions on building the tabernacle. And this tabernacle is going to be able to be picked up and transported to wherever the people were going in the wilderness so God could always dwell near to them. What an honor that must have been. And meanwhile, down below on the ground, we have Aaron and the Israelites making false gods. Little G. Because of this, as a consequence, they almost lost the blessing of having God dwell among them. God was very angry with the Israelite people, as he should have been. He wanted to destroy them. In Exodus 32 and 9, he tells Moses, I have seen this people, and they are indeed a stiff-necked people. 
Now leave me alone so that my anger can burn against them and I can destroy them. Then I will make you into a great nation. Talking about Moses. But because of God's grace and his mercy, he listened to Moses' plea and didn't destroy the people. And he still dwelled among them in later chapters. So in verse 13, we see a piece of Moses' plea. It says, Remember your servants Abraham, Isaac, and Israel. You swore to them by yourself and declared, I will make your offsprings as numerous as the stars of the sky, and I will give your offsprings all this land that I have promised, and they will inherit it forever. I do want to mention 3,000 men did die this day. Now, I know some people are like, girl, 3,000 people died. But this is better than everyone dying, which was God's original plan. But I do want you to keep in mind that if the people wouldn't have moved in haste and decided to make this golden calf, no one would have died. Now, I do mention these 3,000 people because the 3,000 people in your life may be a job. It may be your savings account. It may be your marriage, your time. But with the grace of God, you may not lose as much as you would have. But remember, it can all be avoided and you can keep everything that's for you just by being still and waiting on God. So I pray that I've encouraged you all to be still and not move in haste. Because that was the moral of that story. Be still and not move in haste. Now I want to move to the next Bible story that I thought about in regards to stillness. And that's the story of Mary and Martha. So all my viewers and listeners who do have their Bibles, please turn to Luke chapter 10, verse 38 through 42. So just to give a little background on the story that we're in, Mary and Martha are sisters and they have a personal relationship with God. Jesus has raised their brother Lazarus from the dead. Mary has poured extensive oil on Jesus' feet and then wiped her hair with the oil anointing Jesus' feet. And now we have Jesus visiting Martha's home as a guest and she's hosting him. Now, I feel like I would have gotten along with Martha because I love to host. But if you've ever hosted, you know that hosting is a big deal and it's a big responsibility and it takes a lot of work. You have so many tasks when you're a host. You have to clean the house, cook the food, fix the drinks, greet and mingle with the guests. The list goes on and on and on. And in this text, we actually see that this is true in Martha's case. In verse 40, it says, Martha was distracted by her many tasks. As Martha is completing her hostly duties, Jesus is sitting with the disciples. And Mary is also sitting at the feet of Jesus listening to him. Now, from Martha's point of view, she's like, okay, girl, why aren't you in this kitchen helping me? Why are you sitting at Jesus' feet? Like you are a guest and you're not a guest. You're my sister. You need to be helping me. But from Mary's point of view, she's like, Jesus, the son of God is in this house and he's speaking. I'm not about to miss a word that he's saying and I'm going to hang on to every single word he says. Right. So Mary is oblivious to her sister's frustrations. Now, if Martha was like me, she would have been huffing and puffing, making it known that she was upset. She would have been slamming doors super loud sweeping extra hard, saying little things under her breath. Y'all know how y'all be. I'd be like that too. Let me stop playing. So after a while, Martha finally gets fed up and she interjects the conversation and she's like, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to serve alone? So tell her to give me a hand. And then Jesus responds and says, Martha, Martha, you are worried and upset about many things, but one thing is necessary and it will not be taken away from her. So in this moment, Jesus was telling Mary to stop and be still. Only one thing is truly necessary, he said, and that's to sit in my face and hang on to every word that I am saying. And that's what Mary is doing, right? Many of us in this hectic world, we get caught up and we reflect the spirit of Martha in this text. And we're busy, 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 busy not hearing from God. And then not hearing from God leaves us, as verse 41 says, worried and upset. The Amplified Bible says, worried, bothered, and anxious. The anxious part, oh, y'all, y'all, 
I can relate to that. We tend to have so much to do in life that we say, how can I possibly stop and be still and sit at God's feet? I got stuff to do. I got a job, baby. For the working woman, you have emails, calls, video meetings, deadlines. For the moms, you have PTO meetings, homework, dinner to cook, extracurricular activities. And then you got to spend time with your kids. <laughs> and then for the married woman, y'all got your wifely duties. Then don't let you be all three of those. Oh, girl. And then for everybody else, we have outside family. We have church family. We have church activities. We have oh, so much more that I can't even think of. But even with all of that, we have to stop and be still. So as a verb, still is defined as quieting. In all of the tests that are in your life, it's just noise. Noise that's clouding your brain, preventing you from hearing directly from God. And we need to be still and quiet the noise so we can hear from God. The NLT translation of Luke 1042 says, there's only one thing worth being concerned about, which if we are concerned about sitting still and sitting in God's presence, everything else will work itself out. If we make time to sit at God's feet, then we can hear him loud and clear. And being at his feet can be being in prayer, reading his word, or worshiping through listening to praise and worship music. Then once we sit at his feet, we can hear him and then we can gain his knowledge gain his wisdom, gain his advice, gain his guidance, then all of our tasks, they become simple and easy. And that big issue that we felt like we had, it becomes non-existent. We have to remember Exodus 14 and 14, where it says, the Lord will fight for you. You need only to be still. Y'all know that song, be still, be still. God will fight your battles. God will fight your battles if you just be still. Y'all know I'm a Baptist baby. Now, never, I mean never, be so busy in life that you can't sit and spend time with God. God is how we make it through. I encourage you to start each day with God and end each day in God's presence. I'm sure y'all seen that meme where it says, it's crazy out here, you need Jesus just to go to Walmart. That's so legit. Like, you need Jesus at all times. I challenge you this week before starting work, before making your to-do list, before getting the tasks that you need to get done for that day, sit at God's feet. Then before you close your eyes at night, sit at God's feet. And then I want you to watch how smoothly your week goes. So I pray that I encourage you all to be still and sit in his presence. That was the moral of that section, to be still and sit in his presence. And I feel like this is the perfect stopping point for this episode because the next type of stillness that we're going to get into, it's going to require its own episode, y'all. We're going to be talking about the stillness of resting. Yes, complete rest. So y'all, please get your hearts and minds in agreement for next week. But before in this episode, I do have two questions I want to ask you guys. And I want y'all to answer, please. Please, please, please answer. I want to know, what was your key takeaway from this episode? And also, did you learn anything? Two simple questions. If you're watching on YouTube, just comment them down below. And if you're listening on Spotify, answer in the Q&A section. I cannot wait to read y'all's comments and start a dialogue. I really, really, really want this to feel like a small group community. And, you know, we can help each other grow in this world, you know? And I want to hear y'all points of view. But before ending this episode, I never want to end an episode without providing you all the opportunity to become reborn. Now, I say reborn because in John 3 and 3, it says, Jesus states, truly, I tell you, unless someone is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And to be reborn is just to simply believe in Jesus and accept him as your savior. Just that simple. So if you haven't accepted Jesus as your savior, right now is the perfect opportunity to do so. If you would like to accept Jesus, it's very simple. Just repeat this very short prayer after me. Lord Jesus, I know without you, I am lost. Today, I make the decision to make you the Lord of my life. Thank you for forgiving 
and delivering me from sin. I give you the throne of my heart to lead and guide me in the way that I should go. In Jesus' name, amen. And just like that, it's just that simple. You're now a part of the kingdom of Christ. And I am so excited to have you a part of the family. Congratulations. The next step that you want to take is to connect with a Bible teaching church. I will leave my church's live stream link in the description box below where we go live at 8.30 a.m. and 10.30 a.m. Central Standard Time. And then the next step, I encourage you to purchase our Reborn Workbook. You can find that link down below. That workbook is going to be filled with tools and scriptures that you can use in your brand new Reborn Walk. So that is all that I have for you guys today. I have completed my first episode as a solo host and I am so thankful and so excited. I truly, truly thank God. I want to thank everybody that's watching this premiere today. Thank you for spending time with me in the chat. And then for everybody who's catching the replay, thank you so much for supporting me even after missing the premiere. Please comment down below hashtag replay so I can give you a special thank you because I truly, truly appreciate making time for little me. And then don't forget for all of my podcast listeners, please leave me a review. It really does help the podcast go a long, long way. And then please share this video with five of your friends. Whoever just was laid on your heart, be sure to share it with them. And then if you're watching on YouTube, like, subscribe, bell notification. Y'all know the drill. Be sure to follow us on all of our social media platforms. I'll be sure to put them on the screen for you right now. And then if you do have any prayer requests, please send those to us at obediencepodcast at gmail.com and we will be sure to be in agreement with you. Please y'all do not forget to send me your high lows for the week. You can put them in the comment section, like I said, or you can go on our social media page and DM us or comment it on the high low post. If you're watching this right now on Monday, that post should already be on our social media page. So definitely go and comment there. I think that's all the announcements that I have. I pray that this video found you blessed. I pray that it left you even more blessed. Thank you again. I'm going to go ahead and get up out of here. And remember the challenge for this week is to sit at the foot of God before you start your day and before you end your day. And also to be still and not move in pace. That's what we're going to work on this week. So in the meantime, in between time, until I see y'all next time, as always, be obedient. See y'all then. Bye.